Hey guys, we're coming to you from Thor today. Uh, I'm going to show you a unit that's going to discuss RF to IP. Uh, this has become a consistent topic of discussion here at Thor, and we have a lot of clients that are interested in these products, and they're always curious on how we're going about doing it and solving application dilemmas for them. Uh, today, I'm going to be showing you an ATSC to IP unit. It'll be something like this. And here you can see we have several models available in one channel, four channel, eight channel, 16 and various input types, ATSC, QAM, DVBS2. So I'm already logged into the unit. I'm just type in the username and password. And you can see that this unit is just an IP gateway. So essentially what we're doing is we're just converting the signal type from RF to IP. We're not encoding. We're not decoding, this is simply a gateway. Uh, so we can start by taking a look at what we actually have going. The unit itself, as you can see, is already starting to source some of the ATSC channels. And here you can see the signal quality and the frequency of which we're taking the signal from. Uh, I would suggest that you stay above 30% or so to make sure that you get a good, clean signal. Anything under 30%, you're gonna have an actual uh, problem decoding the signal. Um, since ATSE is digital, you need to make sure you have a clean signal that we can convert to IP packets. And in this case, generally speaking, if the signal quality is under 30%, like here it's 28, we're probably not going to be able to get that signal con to convert to IP. And you might be wondering, well, how come this is the case? Where do you get your signal quality from? Well, your signal quality is actually based on where you live. So I'm going to show you a quick example on how to find this. If you just go to your Google and you type in ATSC channel lineup and for our zip code we'll do where we are in Torrance and there's a site called nocable.org and we're just going to click on that and this is going to show you pretty much all the TV stations in the Los Angeles area and there's one all the way out here in Riverside and I'm assuming we're probably not going to be able to grab that signal. But as you can see, most of these actually are in downtown or maybe closer to Burbank, actually. So if you scroll down here, you can see all the signals in our area. So CBS is going to be over the air channel, too. But more importantly, what you're going to do is you're going to take a look at the UHF and VHF frequencies. And that's the most important part. And this site also shows you the, these little green bars, almost like a cell phone signal. It shows you how strong that signal is compared to where I am. See this one right here, the San Bernardino Riverside area is at red. And you can see that the red is right here too. So we're probably not going to be able to pull that channel because it's 60 miles away. The over the air channel is 24. Okay, so back up top here, we're going to just show you uh, CBS today. CBS is over the air channel too which generally speaking on an ATSC chart would be very low, but it's actually not. TV stations actually use virtual channels to program them. So the actual station is on 572 megahertz. Now, in order to tune 572 megahertz, we actually have to pick the middle frequency. So if it starts at 572, we're actually going 575, and we're gonna click set. We're going to see it's going to start picking up that signal. And as you can see, we're at frequency 58, which is still pretty good. Okay. So now we're going to add the second channel, which you can see here is going to be NBC at 602. So you can get back into your gateway. Again, 605, which was already in there. You hit set. Go to MUX, parse, it's going to process that RF and create IP, and there you go. So we're going to add NBC, pops right over, edit, NBC, set, and again you can go back to your inputs make sure that it's still signal quality is good 
everything should be running and over here we see that we have a port on NBC in 1010 let's change it to 1005 so right now we should have channels on 01, 02 and 05 so if you go back to VLC and open the network stream to 05 and hit play we put our mountain source on our bottle and there you go. NBC is now on UDP 05. And that's pretty much it. That says that that's really how easy it is to make your own channels uh, using an RF to IP um, gateway. And the unit itself can give you a little bit more options. And one of the other things I wanted to show you was you can take a channel. I'm going to show you that one channel that has six SPTS, this one. Uh, this has a low. I'm not sure if it'll work, but we'll see. So it's on 66. So let's give it a try. And go. Let's see. No. Let's see if it'll work. Because essentially what you're going to do is, even though it's just one RF channel, you're actually going to get six separate IP streams, one for each of the programs coming out. Uh, and that's pretty important for units like this. Uh, we had that situation on the first one here. You can see that it was an SD channel. Um, and it doesn't matter how many channels you have uh, or sub-channels, this unit will actually ingest all of them. So we're going to press parse and hopefully they all come over so I can show you guys that uh, one of the most important things is that no matter how many uh, channels you are if you're in a rural area or a suburban area uh, you might be able to pull all the streams anyway and this is great for you know applications including hotels and and uh, casinos or what have you that uh, have a lot of IPT systems already installed but they want to add in local channels and this is the easiest way to add in local channels for free uh, it doesn't take more than a single box like this uh, to create those channels so we're still waiting it looks like it's not gonna work and we can pull a different one here KTLA 596 so we're gonna go back in here and change this to 599 and that was actually a good example of showing you if the frequency quality is too low um, and the unit can't receive that RF channel correctly. Uh, you know, you can't expect everything to work the way you want it to. Um, it just means that maybe you're a little too far from that TV station. And it's just not working appropriately. So now we have a new channel set up. And you can see that the data rate is almost 19 megs a second. And we have great quality at 58. So we're going to go back in here and try it again. So we're just going to press parse. And again, this unit happens to be in eight channels for RF input. So that's eight separate ATSC frequency channels you can put in and you can actually pull it out all the IP streams you want from each individual sub channel as well. So even though it says eight RF channels, you can have, you know, 30 or more depending on how many sub channels your local TV carriers have. So here we're going to press N. It looks like there's four additional subchannels, and right here, let's call this A B set A C set. Just to give you guys an example here. And let's see where these start on which pit. And you see all of these channels I just created. So it goes 1004, 5, 6, 7. So if you go back into the VLC player.
KTLA 5. South Africa 2017 on this this place was reality show where everybody hated me, believe it or not. But I got to to spend time to see what these beautiful majestic animals. And this one shouldn't work because we have a duplicate port number. So just for the sake of arguments, we're gonna go to the next one because it should be a sub channel. And see, immediately the box shrunk because it's SD, standard def. And of course, this is a very old movie, so it's easy to see. That's indeed the case. It's an SD channel. And now I'm going to show you the last one. What else is hidden back there? And another. And I'm not sure what this is or what's going on, but just to show you an example, this is how over-the-air television works and how you can convert it to SPTS and feed that through your IPTV infrastructure for easy distribution. If you guys have any questions about this or would like more information about these products, you can contact us directly at Thor Fiber, Thor Broadcast. You can see our phone numbers, contact information on our website readily. Thanks for stopping by and hope you guys have a great weekend.